Hi everybody. Welcome to the final week of our term and our course. We just have a little bit to go and then you'll be finished and on your way to your next courses or maybe even graduation. So congratulations on that. Uh, let's see what we had last week. Let me pull up my PowerPoint here. Okay, so last week we covered carrying capacity of ecosystems uh, with our bean experiment and the birds. <clears throat> So how many individuals can an ecosystem sustain of a particular species? This totally depends on the birth rate, the death rate, how much space, and how many resources uh, this particular population takes up. And we took a look at that. And if the death rate is higher, then it takes much longer for the uh, ecosystem to reach its carrying capacity of a particular species. We also studied about cohorts in a population and how that's different. I mean the the cohorts have different survival rates depending on factors that happen. So I know that you guys probably did not get to go out to cemeteries to take a look at them, but if you do go and look at cemeteries that are older than the early 1900s, one thing will be uh, amazingly apparent. If you look at the uh, headstones, you will find a tremendous number of individuals that died in 1918 or 1919, and that was because of the Spanish flu. It's been estimated that 40 million people across the globe died because of the Spanish flu during that basically one year time span of a particular type of flu. And so you see many, many gravestones with that particular um, range of death dates on it. So we study cohorts in a population to figure out things and understand things. Another example is baby boomers. You all have heard baby boomers. I'm one of those. Uh, baby boomers are a certain cohort in a population, our population in the United States. And we have, we're aging now, and we have certain needs. We need more health care than we did 20, 30, 40 years ago. So studying cohorts is very important. This week's topic is about how to measure population sizes. And we use three different techniques. One is called transects, where you're drawing lines on your big colored paper that you get in the lab kit for this week. Good luck at looking at those little tiny squares. I had a lot of trouble with that, even with a lighted magnifying glass. So, but, you know, my um, close-up eyesight is not all that great. But anyway, transects. You're going to count how many red, blue, and green, though I thought they were yellow, um, squares, touch lines that you draw on this big colored piece of paper. Now, one thing that I will tell you about this week is that you can actually take that wax pencil that you got in one of the other week's kits and use that on this paper. It tells you to use a wet erase marker. I don't have one of those. I don't use one of those anymore. And so I just used the wax pencil and uh, wiped it off with a paper towel. That worked perfectly fine for me. I didn't change the um, the paper at all because it's very slick. So transects. You're going to count how many organisms are touching a line that you have drawn randomly across a population. So it's a random sampling of a population. Quadrats are um, small squares that you measure out and then count how many individuals are in that particular square. And then we also have mark and recapture where we marked some of the individuals of a population, release them back into the population, and then we, when we catch them again along with other individuals that are not marked, then we can figure out how big a size population you have just by knowing how many marked individuals you have captured before. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, you will be asked questions in this lab about why you would w use one of these techniques over another or w what's an example of individuals in a population that you might uh, use a particular technique with. 
And so I looked in the OpenStax biology textbook and there are there's a section in there. It's chapter 45.1. It's the ecology chapter, but it's one part of that ecology chapter. And this gives you some answers and some examples that you can look at and you don't have to search that whole textbook uh, for this information. So um, that's a good place to look. Hence for the lab, I already told you about the wax pencil and um, I already told you about how to find answers in the textbook. Remember, it is a free textbook. Absolutely free. Anybody can look at it. So please do use it because it's there and it's very helpful instead of just doing a Google search. Sometimes with Google searches, don't we all know, they come up with wild and crazy answers. So use your textbook because it's good. And then finally, this is the last week. So you have to turn in any work that you have unfinished and all of your work has to be turned in by this coming Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. And I am assuming that is Eastern time, so be aware of that. Uh, but everything has to be turned in. Once we reach that deadline, the course closes and I cannot open it back up. Someone else does this and does it for all the courses. So just realize you can't get back in to the course after that time. If you're having issues, if you need to take an incomplete, uh, if you want to do the pass fail option, you should be emailing me immediately, like right now, to let me know so that we can work on that for you. So do let me know if you have any issues. I'm here for you. You know how to get in touch with me. Use my email, m.sigmund at snhu.edu. And I will be answering your questions this week. Otherwise, good luck. Oh, one other thing, please do your evaluations. I'll put an announcement in our course. But please do your course evaluations um, because that especially if you think I did a good job, uh, that supports me and my work here at SNHU and shows my higher ups that I'm doing okay and that um, I was adequate in my job. Uh, if you have other comments or if you want to send me comments, please feel free. Uh, I'm always open to that. So that is it. It's been a wonderful term. I've enjoyed meeting so many of you and interacting with you. It's just been a great semester and a great term. Um, there, I've had so many A's. I know I'm going to have so many A's this time. They're going to wonder what I've been doing. But uh, <laughs> that is all on you because y'all have been a great group of students. So have a good week and let me know if you need anything. And I'll be talking to you later. Bye.